in a previous video, I was talking about this earth sleeving. You know how I was saying that I keep different colors on the van and stuff? The customer here has got the thin earth sleeving, and I normally carry this stuff, which is like the four mil earth sleeving, three mil? I don't know, I can't, I don't know. But that's always what I've kept, and it's just like a one size fits all. But the customer presented me with this really thin earth sleeving, and I've got to be honest, when you're doing switches and sockets, that it looked much nicer in a bat box. I definitely recommend that. Anyway, welcome back. It's good to have you back. I hope you're sitting comfortably with your beer and your peanuts. Uh, we are back. This is a job which you haven't seen in quite a while. We did this, this was a little extension we were kitting out, and this was in sort of June last year, so it's taken them about a year to board it, because I think the customer's doing it himself slowly, bit by bit. In fact, I'll show you around now. All right, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a still of what the room used to look like, just so you can see how far it's come, because it was about a year ago we were here. But this is the sort of living room downstairs, and it's come out really well. If he's painted it, all the skirt skirtings have got to go on yet, and they're putting like a hardwood floor down. And we're just second fixing it. So smoke alarm's got to go in, light fitting, switches, usual jazz. And out here, little utility room. It's come out quite nicely, tiled floor, utility room. This is just a temporary light, I've got to take this one down. And then up here, this is the nicest room. I think it's such a nice, such a nice color, and it's so bright. And you don't see this. When you're here doing a first fix, you don't really notice it. But when it's finished, it's suddenly the whole room comes together. It's such a nice finish. We've got to put all the sockets on now. These have all got to go on. Little bathroom just behind you over there. The customer's done it all himself. But uh, a really nice finish. He's just taken his time and just done, he's done a really nice job considering he's just done it himself slowly over time. So let us crack on and uh, we'll update you as we go along. There is um, a fault somewhere from what the customer says. This table in here. I will set the test meter up and we shall run through it together. That's the worst part. After you do your first fix and you've installed it, you've checked it, it's working. Of course, you come back after the second fix, plastering, boarding and all the rest of it. And there's a fault on your cabling because someone's gone through the plasterboard with a screw or something and they've clipped the cable or something. I mean, that happens. I haven't had it for a while, but this is the first one I've had it on. Oh, that makes the most bloody noise. I know the tops of these ones, I don't know why, they snap. Yeah, they're just absolutely mangled on itself. Yeah. These ones are garbage. These um, pigtails, that's them. I find the tops of these ones, I don't know whether these are just cheap ones. They weren't, these were, what's the, there's a good brand, I'll leave the name on the screen, I can't remember what they're called. It was a good brand. But these tips snap, if you put, when you screw them in, these shear off for some reason, I don't know why. But anyway. I can't, I'm not sure if I'm sold on these fittings or not. I don't know. What's your thoughts on these? Leave it below. Liked by Bob on Twitter. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, I was watching a channel the other day called Active Self Protection. Fuck it, it's really good. I'm not, I've not been paid, right? Just saying. <coughs> this, happens to be, this happens to be a good channel. I was watching that, yeah, it's a good channel. I like it. You know how you just, when you spend like hours, you get home at like six, you go straight onto YouTube and six hours later, you know, you're like, oh, fuck and you just flick from one channel to the other. We would do it. I found him, it's quite a good channel. It's short live and, live and earth together. Normally I'm really careful, I don't understand what's happened. I'm proper conscientious when I do a first fix, so you don't, you don't get this exact problem, but. Later. Sorry to be a pain though, can you give me a hand here a sec? Mm -hmm. How can one help? Can you just short earth and, earth and black together on both a sec? Yeah. All right, All right it might be the fitting upstairs. All right, so black to earth? Yeah, on one. Let me know if I need to do another. Yeah, try the other one. Yep. Nada. No, all right, I've got one more here, hang on. Lovely. Okay, we've got one, that's yeah. good. Okay, I've marked that one for you. All right. A few moments later. That one's just broken, I don't know what's happened. Is it going from there to there? The last one, or you don't, you don't remember? <laughs> it goes from there to there, this tiny little length. I'm at total loss there, I don't understand that. It's the shortest run. It's the shortest it's the run. The shortest it's about run. Two meters of cable. Not even over the ceiling. Like, come on. <laughs> You've got more cable coming out of this hole yeah, than there is going lengthwise across. Yeah, there's more coming out. Of I'm not even joking. <laughs> I don't understand what. All right, we'll get to it later. Okie dokie. If 
girls noticed. <laughs> the reason sometimes when there's a transition and you see me smiling like this is because me and the camera guy have been talking about some random stupid shit and we've just started filming immediately <laughs> afterwards. Um, anyway, the point of this was... Hang on, cramp. The point... Oh, fucking cramp. When you get old, you get cramp. The point of this was, I remember last year when I was fitting this, there were some people, um, uh, obviously experts, and they were saying that the back box here, because I was fitting 25 mil boxes, and you saw me cutting them in, actually, and I, people were saying, why are you cutting them in? That's ridiculous. You're just costing the client money, yada, yada, yada. You're a, a rogue and all the rest of it. Well, they were saying that the, the argument was there's no need to, to sink a 25 mil box in if they're dotting and dabbing, because if you just fix the box directly to the wall, you can then just use the, the dot and dab with the, the plasterboard 12 and a half mil, and then say another sort of 12 and a half mil of snot, and that gives you your, your 25 mil, so you haven't got to sink them in. But the problem with that is that this is why we cut them in. So you've still got the 12 and a half mil of plasterboard on the front here. And it just gives you a bit of extra depth on the. You try fitting a flat plate USB socket into a 25 mil box, it just can't be done. So that's the other reason. I can't even remember if we had these boxes or the client gave them to us, I can't remember. But either way, I deliberately, I recess them for that reason. It just gives you a bit more, a bit more play. I normally fit the 30, not the 47s, the 35s, that's it. I normally fit the 35s because they just give you a bit more wiggle room. So that was why I sunk them in, if anybody was wondering. Actually a cool little level, these little pocket ones. I quite like it actually. I've been using it, uh, been using it all day. Normally you see the big Milwaukee one I've got, but that's quite... <laughs> It's a neat little tool. I think MK have released a, like a budget version of their double socket. I think, I've never seen, I've seen photos of it, but I've not seen it, I've not seen them in the flesh, but apparently there's like a, a uh, it's like a low calorie version of these ones. It's like just a budget brand of these. I've not seen them, so I can't comment, but I believe people have done some teardowns on them. I don't, I don't know. I don't think they were rated too well, but I've never, I can't actually personally comment because I've not seen them, but uh, leave it below if you've heard, if you've seen them and fitted them, what's your thoughts on them? Because I've not seen it yet. That reminds me. There were people saying that my, my thumbs bend back a disproportionately long way. Um, I think it could just, I mean, I don't know. It could just be the spending a life of just pushing accessories back with your thumbs. I think, I mean, they do bend back an unusually long way, I admit, but do your thumbs bend back? Mm, not so much they bend back, but they get cramp and they seize a Is that weird? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's not just me then. For the public, that's... <laughs> One more time. That... Okay. That's, I think, as much as... Do, would your thumbs bend back further over time if you just kept Tom, doing so? I think so. That's double jointed there or something, though. <laughs> it's just weird. But it's just pushing accessories, I think, and just over time, you've just, you, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going onto Amazon right now and I'm buying one of these little levels. Are you? They're awesome. I really like them. Thanks, man. Pocket Pro Magnetic. That's the one. A tenner. Awesome. Add to basket. Done. Done. Right. I've got to call the boss. <laughs> I don't, I'm just an employee of the company now. I have to ring Sarah, the boss. I know. I'm, I don't know how you feel about this. Who employed who? I mean, I employed Sarah, but I mean, she's just kind of taken over. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, Sarah. Yes, no, Sarah. Sarah. I just say those words whenever I disagree. Yes, Do you Sarah. curtsy as well at her now? <laughs> if you say so, Sarah. <laughs> it's a quiet life. I sound like I'm married to her. I think we should put like, I think we should have, you know those Chinese gongs? I think when I say that reminds me we have a Chinese gong. I think we should start doing that. But what I was going to talk about is these. You can buy these on Amazon. And this is something that I was introduced to a couple of months ago, and they are fantastic. They're called magic sponges. And they're like, it's difficult to describe the, the texture of them. They wear down, so basically you just dip it in water. And let's say you've got, uh, let's say you've scuffed the paint, or you've scuffed, you've put a boot mark on gloss or something. It's easy done, that's why I carry them, because I, I do it often, it happens. 
but you literally you just dip this in water and you just rub it on the skirting and it will literally just take the mark out they are amazing how they work but they do wear down so they're the sort of thing you can use that two or three times and then you throw it away so you buy like a pack of 100 for like 15 20 quid something like that but they're well worth it uh, bath enamel they're good for that as well if you mark with your boots and stuff if you've marked tiles paintwork, anything, anything gloss, they're just brilliant. Socket fronts, you'd be amazed how much stuff they can take off. Go and get them and just keep some on the back of your van because they're properly, that's something I really do recommend, properly worth keeping. All right. right. This is supposed to loosely resemble that. All right, well that's our base. Can I just put a pendant up? Okay. Okay, the instructions which I threw away, I think we're gonna to have to refer to them. 12 seconds later. Let's just go with the flow and we'll work it out. Tell you what, right, pause a minute and we'll be back in a sec because it's gonna take me 10 minutes I think, to figure out how this all goes together. That was a mission to fit that, proper mission. I've gotta put all these chandelier glassy crystal bits in. I've gotta adjust these to get this to sit level. But I'll be honest, if I leave it like that now, people would just say I've done a shit job. But if an artist had done that, it would be amazing and that would be in every gallery and it'd be worth about 50 grand. But because I've done it and left it like this, it's just a shit job, which I think is a bit unfair. My skills just aren't recognised, that's all. Right, we have done a doing it with Tom on two-way and intermediate switching. So um, here it is, two-way and intermediate switching. it with Tom. Right, now for the sake of time, I've sped this up a little bit and I've put all of the neutrals and all of the earths in connectors already just to speed up the video. So once you've put those all in connectors and stuff them in the back of the box, you'll then have, here in this switch, I've done it, we've got, I've got a two gang switch here. So I've got one switch doing the bedroom lights here. So just ignore that. We're not working on that one. So we've got a feed in, which is this one here which I will put in now. And we're just basically just gonna bridge that across to the other switch here, which is gonna be our two-way switch. Now there's multiple different ways of doing this, okay? This is just the way that I'm showing you is just the way that I do it. So generally, you have a feed-in, you have a three-core, and you have a switch wire, okay? So you've got your feed-in, which comes from wherever it is, your last light switch or wherever. You've got your three-core, which is the three-core on earth, which goes down to the switch at the bottom of the stairs. And then you'll have your switch wire, which is what goes up to your light fitting. So what we're gonna do is your brown of your three-core, so you've got brown, black, gray, okay? Your brown always goes into the common on your switch, like so. Now the way that I do it, you should only ever have one wire in the common. You shouldn't ever have more than that, except in the intermediate switch where you haven't got a common and all you'll do is you'll just bridge the wires together. But I'll show you that downstairs in a second. All right, so the next step is we've got our other two conductors of our three core cable. We've got the black and the gray. So we're gonna get a little bit of brown sheathing and we're just gonna sheath those because both of those are gonna be live conductors, like so, okay. Now, once we've done that, I'm gonna take the black and we're gonna pop that into L1 along with our common, like so. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the black in terminal L1 with our permanent live. We're then gonna take the gray, which is the last cable on the three core, and we're gonna pop that into L2. And with that one, we're also gonna put the switch wire, the one which goes up to our light fitting above our head. So we're gonna pop both of those into L2. Something along the lines of this, just like so. So that's basically it. Once you've put those in, that's all the cables wired up here. So once you've put all those in, that's basically what you're left with now. That's the end result. So we put this switch on and then we'll go downstairs and we'll do the intermediate switch in the hallway. Okay, so this is the intermediate switch, which is the one in the middle of the, well, this is actually downstairs. We've got another switch just over there, but this will be our middle switch. So what we're gonna do, we've got our two three cores here. Now we're gonna sleeve these up first. That's the first thing we're gonna do. All right, now we've done that, next thing, we're gonna take our Earth's CPCs and we're gonna put them in the metal lug in the back of the box, like so. Now, for the purposes of this video, uh, the client hasn't got an MK intermediate switch, so I'm just gonna to have to use a Schneider one just to demonstrate this and then I'll, I'll get an MK one tomorrow or something from C's. But what we need to do 
is we've got two three cores. So first things first, what we're going to do is the brown, which was in the common upstairs, is going to go in the common in this switch over here. But because we haven't got a common on an intermediate, we're going to pop these browns in a way go. So it essentially bypasses this switch. Okay, now once we've done that, we're going to take one of our sets of three cores and we're going to put two of them. It doesn't matter which way you round you put them as long as you keep it the same on both. So we're going to put one of those in the top set like so. And then with the remaining pair that we've got, we just turn the switch upside down and we do exactly the same thing again. All you've got to remember with these ones is that you've got to keep the grey and the black on the same side of the switch because it switches like that. So as long as you keep them on the same side, it doesn't matter which way around, but just keep them on the same side. And that's basically it, that's that switch done. So we'll move on to the final two-way switch, which is just over there. All right, so this is our final switch. All we've got left here is one three core. So all the three core has done is it's gone from the switch upstairs all the way down to that switch over there, the intermediate switch, and then back over here. So you've just got one three core to connect up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the brown and we're gonna pop that straight in the common, like so. And then we're gonna take our final black and gray, which we've marked up as brown and blue, and we are gonna pop those in L1. And then the final one, is grey, which we sleeved as it's brown, not blue. It's a little mistake there. Did you spot it? It's gone 4.30, it's okay. <laughs> that was a deliberate test. I wanted to see how many people were paying attention. We're gonna take our grey, which we've now sleeved as brown, and we pop that in L2. And that is basically it. You power it up and that'll work like a treat. <sighs> we are done for today. Um, the, I've got to change the fuse board here, but that is going to be another video coming up. Uh, it might be next week or the week after, but it's going to be imminently. Uh, so we're going to leave you to it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, all the links come up on the screen now, and we will see you, if not on a Friday, on the Monday. Take care. This is all natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that? This is like... Is that it? Somewhere around there. <laughs> you have to talk all of these ones as well. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Uh, got it, yeah. I'll touch it together upstairs. You'll get a reading and just shout when you get it. Lovely, yeah. 0.35. Right, R1, R2. What did we say it was? 0.35. Right, okay.